Good afternoon everyone. It's time for another super quick tutorial. I'm picking up where we left off with OpenGL tutorial number three. So I've gone and just created a new project called OpenGL tutorial number four and it's just a copy paste of what the contents of OpenGL tutorial number three were. So from our last tutorial we were rendering a triangle and a quad here and what we're going to do is we're going to continue along with a sort of nay hey kind of tutorials and start to apply a bit of rotation to these guys. Now we're uh, we're a little bit ahead of where the Nehe tutorials were because we already had our model matrix, view matrix, view matrix and projection matrix separated. So all we're going to do to do this rotation is manipulate this model matrix a little bit. So to make sure that the rotation happens at a constant rate, I'm going to use the stopwatch that's part of the system.diagnostics namespace. So let's go and add one of those to our project here. And I'm also going to have a float that stores some sort of angle that our objects are at. All right, so just before my main loop starts, I'm going to go and create a system.diagnostics.stopwatch. And now every time that I render the frame, I'm going to go and calculate how much time has elapsed since the last frame. So to do that, I'm going to, I'll do that right at the top here. I'm going to stop my watch. And then I'm going to create a value called delta. Uh, I'll call it delta time, I think. That is equal to the number of elapsed milliseconds since the last frame, divided by 1000F. Now, if your program runs really, really, really fast, this elapsed milliseconds might be zero, in which case you're going to get some weird studying, stuttering. So what you can also do is you can do watch.elapsed ticks divided by system.diagnostics.stopwatch.frequency, which gives you how many ticks there are per second. So that's another way to do this guy. All right, and then lastly, we have to restart the watch. All right, so we've got some sort of delta time since our last frame, and we're just going to go and increase the value of angle by that delta time value. Okay, so now we're just going to manipulate this model matrix a little bit, pretty simple. I'm going to go and create a rotation matrix in the Y direction using that angle value, and then multiply it by my translation amount. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here for my square, except I'm going to use an X rotation. So not too bad. This is simply going to do a rotation in the X direction and then translate that by a certain amount. And same with this guy, we're going to do a rotation in the Y direction and then translate it by a certain amount. Notice the order of operations here. We want to do the rotation first while the object is still centered around the origin before doing the translation. And I'll, I'll show you why that happens in just a moment here, but let's run this program and take a look at it. And you can see that we've got our rotating triangle and we've got our rotating square here and perspectives being applied correctly, all that kind of cool stuff. So that's about it for this tutorial, but to give a quick demo, I'm going to reverse the order of operations here. And let's just put this over here. Now you can see what's happening is this triangle is being rotated about the origin, but the triangle was shifted before being rotated. So now that edge of the triangle is what's really being rotated around. So the order of operation does matter quite a bit when you're doing matrix multiplication. So we're going to go and switch that back and probably call it a day. So today we just went and used the stopwatch class to go and find out how much time was between frames so that we could adjust our angle accordingly. And then we used some of the built-in matrix methods so that we could create some rotation matrices and apply that to our model matrices. And since we already had the model matrix exposed, it made this tutorial really easy and straightforward. So that's it. During the next tutorial, we're going to be taking some time to rebuild our object as 3D objects. So we're going to have a cube rotating around as well as one of these sort of pyramid structures. So that should be a lot of fun. And until then, have a great afternoon and happy coding.